Okay, I have clay that's like really well centered. I'm gonna make a cylinder. I'm gonna show you the steps that I use going from a top-down viewpoint, okay? So, um, I put my left hand on the side of the clay here. It's just kind of these fingers are resting, not squeezing. My thumb goes on the very top, and I'm gonna make the well. I'm gonna use my right hand, push that thumb down, slow, steady, firm, and I stop when I'm about a half to a quarter of an inch from the wheel head. Remember, you can stop the wheel, put a needle tool in, measure that with a fingertip. That could be a little bit skinnier there. So I'll just push that a little bit further. Next step, I'm gonna use my left hand fingers, these two fingers to open the well. And all I'm gonna do is use this hand on top and a pull toward me flat across the bottom. And that is sort of a two, almost three inch opening there. Um, all that water that's in the bottom, throughout the process, you wanna get the water out the bottom, push your sponge down, it's called compressing the base. The important part of it is that you're getting, you're not having standing water in the base of this for, for too long at one time. Okay, so now is where I move to three o'clock on the wheel. My right hand is on the outside, my left hand's on the inside. And see my hand position here? My fingertips are gonna squeeze together and this clay is getting taller. But see how my hands are connected? I don't, I never, I never throw like that. Unless I'm using something really tall and my hands have to be, have to be separated. So right now, this hand is going to really kind of try to pinch and scoop this clay at the very bottom here. It's good practice to try to keep the clay sort of cone-shaped rather than bowl-shaped. If you find that it starts to become kind of bowl-shaped, remember you can collar the clay in, sort of doing that. All right, I'm going to just take a little bit of that clay off the bottom, and now I'm going to pull this again. Fingertips together, squeezing, slowly coming up the wall. And I always stop before I get to the very top, so I'm about a half an inch from the top there. Now, there's other steps that I can do. I can compress the, the lip, my fingers, just like that. This finger pushes down. These fingers just kind of rest there. Um, I've got a puddle in the bottom, so I'm going to get that puddle out. Got a sponge. I'm going to kind of reach in carefully. Use one hand to support the other. Kind of mop up that puddle that was in the bottom. Remember there's a step called leveling the rim and this isn't very uneven but I can just do this as an example. Pushing the needle tool through slow, get to my fingertip and just take that extra clay off. Okay now it's a little thicker here than I want um, but I'm going to just kind of demonstrate this step here where I'm going to take this wooden knife tool I'm going to hold it really firmly with two hands. I'm just going to kind of shave some of this bottom thickness away. So you can kind of see how I was holding my hand, sort of like that. I've got this ring of clay here that I'm going to run my needle tool underneath. I'm going to peel this, stop the wheel, peel this clay away. Okay. And then you'll remember that I was talking about using a rib tool to clean up the outside of clay. So here's how I clean up the outside using a rib tool. Got a, a rib tool here, and I'm gonna essentially do this to the surface of the clay. I'm just gonna scrape up any gooey clay on the lip. And so my motion tends to be sort of like this, where this finger goes on the inside, traces to the outside. So you'll notice that my motions tend to be uh, very slow, steady, and I really try to be methodical, okay? Now, one sort of last step I do before I finish anything 
is I always just take another look at the lip. In this case, I can kind of round the lip with a sponge. So you can compress the lip with a sponge. You can compress the lip with a piece of leather, a leather chamois. A lot of people use that to make the lip smooth. And what I'll do now is I'll stop the wheel and I'll show you what this looks like when we cut it in half. So when I examine what a cylinder looks like, I always keep the, the wire really tight, pull the wire through about halfway, pull this up instead of pulling down. You don't cut it as effectively when you pull. And so there's what that looks like. Tiny bit thick here, but it's a pretty decent cylinder. A little bit thick here, but for our demonstration, it's pretty good.